Professor Siddiqui's central achievements um, were threefold. One, he epitomized the concept of the thoughtful scientist, um, quite different from um, today's uh, neoliberal entrepreneurial scientist model. Two, he epitomized the self-effacing scientific institution builder, um, quite distinct from um, people naming scientific institutions after themselves. And three, he epitomized the seamless interface between a thoughtful science and a secular, tolerant, inclusive, humanist, dare I say, socialist society. He clearly had an absolutely profound influence on the biological sciences in India. And please note, when I say that, I don't restrict it to molecular biology. I'm saying to biological sciences in India. He had both the talent, the ability, and be it said, the good fortune to be in the thick of emergent nascent molecular biology in the 60s, initially in, in the uh, United Kingdom and subsequently in the US. And given his extraordinary sharpness of mind, he made major contributions as well as having, I am absolutely certain, a great deal of fun. When he be, came back to India, and uh, he came back uh, in 1962, I think, um, he came back to work as most of us following on the footsteps of people like him did. He came back to work in the area that he had worked on as a PhD student in the 50s in the United Kingdom and then subsequently as a postdoctoral fellow uh, at the end of the 50s, early 60s in the US, both in Coltsman Harbor uh, uh, Laboratory as well as at UPenn. He worked on bacterial genetics and he made very insightful uh, contributions uh, to that field. And then. When he was in a field that he could have worked for the rest of his life through and been recognized and achieved and well regarded, he decided that there were interesting ways of using genetics to look at maybe even more complex or at the very least certainly very different biological phenomena. And uh, uh, initially with Seymour Benzer at Caltech, he began working on the fruit fly as a model for the genetics of the nervous system. In other words, how do genes put the nervous system and its circuits together to control behavior? It's very difficult to overemphasize what an extraordinary shift of field of study this was, to go from fungal, bacterial and related organism genetics um, and fundamental biochemical, biophysical questions about how DNA uh, replicates, how DNA is exchanged, uh, how mutations arise and are suppressed, um, work that he started with uh, Ponte Corvo in uh, Glasgow and continued with Karen both uh, at Coldspring Harbor in UPenn uh, to work that he did himself in his TIFR laboratory. From that to go to as complex an organism as the fruit fly and to begin working in embryologically complicated uh, situations was a huge shift. And it's a tribute to Bade that he, despite having made that shift, at the age of, how old was he? 
40 something. Um, he came to be regarded as uh, one of the most interesting minds in that field. And that's a field that he continued to work in for the rest of his life, in fact, right until the end. A lot of what Obeid did was by um, example, um, rather than by um, emphatic proselytization. Um, he was a very careful, reserved individual. And uh, uh, when he spoke, he spoke about the issues and about the questions. Um, it very rarely brought Ubed Siddiqui into the conversation. Um, that, in my eyes, is a strength and, and uh, a, a virtue. Um, on the other hand, in a celebrity culture, it leads to um, a sense of understatement. Um, I don't know how much that has to do with uh, uh, whether his influence with regard to the issues of science and society that you refer to uh, are m more or less widely spread than I would like to believe. But certainly, um, in terms of being a sometimes exasperatingly ideal gentleman scientist, uh, he was quite unique.